Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I'm Lisa Blackburn and this is my YouTube channel for everything I want to talk about science and math. And today we're in physical science class learning about electricity. Yay! We only have two units left, this one and the last chemistry one. And then you'll be done with physical science. So far everybody in here is doing really good. Um, no one's like beyond hope for failing. Everybody can pass. Good job. Okay. So electricity, you already know what it is. You've already done a lab with it. So but we're just going to be filling in a few blanks here. So there's a couple of ways of electricity. You can have charging by friction. And this is what Gunnar was talking about. If you take a balloon and rub it on your hair, it'll make you have electricity in your hair. And it's based on this idea that opposites, do they attract or repel? Opposites attract, attract right? That's why... People end up dating people they shouldn't be dating. <laughs> Opposites attract. So positive and negative are attracted to each other. And then what do like charges do? Attract or repel? Repel. 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 So that would be positive and positive and negative and negative. Positive, positive, negative, negative. So here I've got a little woolen mitt rubbing on a balloon and that'd make electricity. So when objects are charged by friction, electrons are rubbed off. And that's what makes it have a charge. The closer two objects are that have the same charge, the higher the potential energy and they repel. Okay, so now let's look over here at our song. Electric charges and atoms. So static charges, we already said this, are not moving. Static means still. If you're talking about water and it's a static body of water, that means it's like a pond. It's not moving. Okay? The study of static charges is called static electricity. Let's roll up. Everybody get to roll up? Yep. See how I filled in a lot of your blanks already so we could do this fast. So Gunner already said it. What charge do electrons have, Gunner? Negative. Negative. What charge do protons have? Positive. Y'all know so much already. Things can be neutral even though they're made out of charged particles. How? They have balanced charges. They have the same number of positive and negative and it makes them neutral. Okay? Balanced charges. Now, charging by contact. So, another thing you should do is they sell these little rods that you like rub like silk or wool on and they get um, charges on them and then you can touch something and I think I've got one I have a box of electricity stuff I inherited from physics and I'm, we're gonna we're gonna mess with it and see if it works okay so there's one way of charge by contact you touch things with this rod and it makes them have charges so what is charging by contact tech uh, electrons can move or flow onto it. So if I have this rod and it's got electrons on it, I can touch something else and it can get a charge. So a conductor can conduct electricity. So this would be things like a metal. Metal are good conductors of electricity. An insulator can't conduct electricity. This is things like rubber. That's why wires have rubber on them, so the electricity doesn't flow out. All right, good so far? Can I move? Not yet. I can tell y'all are still writing. Yes, plastic. That's right. All right, may I roll? Anybody still writing? Okay. So here we've got a cloud. We're going to talk about lightning. Okay. So on the ground, uh, this is ground, right? Here's my little house. Here's the ground. But in electricity, there's also something called a ground. Sarah, you need to go back to your seat. You're over here talking when you shouldn't be, and you're not in your seat. Go back to your seat. Pay attention. All right, but anyway, there is something in electricity called a ground, and what that is is the, it's a conductor touching the earth. So if you ever notice plugs, 
Some plugs like your vacuum cleaner have three sticks coming out of it. You ever notice that? Where other plugs like your iPhone charger only has two. The one that has the third plug, that third plug is a ground. And it makes it where the extra electricity has a path to go. So a long time ago, they used to put lightning rods on top of houses. So then if a house got hit by lightning, the extra electricity would go on the conductor, it's made out of metal, into the ground, and then, you know, bypass burning down your house. They don't do that so much anymore because those lightning rods really attract electricity and they've decided it's better not to have it coming towards your house at all but you still see it on real tall buildings you'll see those those um lightning, lightning rods up there okay so this is charging by induction and lightning charging by induction is that and is that charges scoot and i know that's not real scientific but i'll, I'll explain it to you and then with lightning the negative bottom of a thundercloud it induces a positive charge on the ground. So let me explain it to you. If you remember when we learned about a little bit about chemistry way back when, we said that water was like Mickey Mouse. It has a negative oxygen and two positive hydrogens. So water has a positive side and a negative side, and clouds are made out of water. And so they've got all these charges rubbing around up there in the cloud, okay? And so here comes a cloud, and clouds will get to be negative on the bottom. They'll, have, they'll be negative on the bottom and positive on the top. And here comes the cloud, and there's all this negative on the bottom. Well, it will cause the negative charges in the ground to scoot away uh, from the negative charges in the cloud because opposite lights repel. That leaves the positive charges on the ground. And then you, so that is our charging by induction. And then the, all this negative is attracted to all this positive. So eventually they meet with a lightning bolt. These, these negative charges become electricity and it becomes a bolt of lightning hitting the ground. And we're going to talk more about how to be safe in lightning. I give you a whole page of it. Okay. All right, so this is why, this is sort of the physics behind it. And if you take physics, which I think some of y'all have signed up for, um, you'd, be, you'd learn more formulas and stuff like that. But this is what it's based on. It's called Coulomb's Law. And force is proportional to charges times each other over the distance squared. So that little symbol that looks like an eight on its side with a little piece going is a math symbol for means proportional. If one increases, the other one increases. So it's a formula, this electric force is proportional to the charges and the symbol for charge is lowercase q, I don't know why, over the distance squared. And what that means is, you don't have to know the formula. You don't have to use the formula. I just want you to have heard of Coulomb's law, but I do want you to understand this. If the charge on two objects is doubled, then the force is doubled. That makes sense. You double the electric charge, now it's gonna be doubled. If the distance is doubled, the force is half, is one half um, as strong. So if you separate two things, they're not as likely to have electricity jump between them. And you sort of know this. When you have like messed around with zapping somebody with the electricity, you've noticed you gotta get your finger close. If your finger's real far away, you're not gonna be able to zap your brother. If you gotta get that finger close without him noticing that you're about to zap him with electricity. Okay, so if you if you run your heat a lot in the in the house in the winter, it's more like that. Okay, any questions so far? Were you understanding electricity? We got a little thought questions down there. We're gonna talk about that. Okay, so we're gonna look at these lightning facts. A lightning bolt is like static electricity spark only bigger. And when you scuff your feet on the carpet, you're like the cloud, you become negative. What you touch is like the ground, positive. The static electricity is caused by the clashing of hail and water molecules within the cloud. Negative charges are pulled off and separated toward the bottom of the cloud, positive toward the top. This is called induction. The, it takes 67,000 volts to jump one inch. 
Think how much when you see lightning, you ever seen it go like a mile across the sky in the summertime? Think about how much electricity that is. Cloud to ground lightning bolt can travel up to three miles, cloud to cloud up to 10 miles. The average lightning bolt has 500 times the horsepower of all American automobiles put together, but it's on only about 35 millionths of a second. We don't see electricity in a lightning flash, just the burning spark channel, a burning column of air about one inch in diameter. This burning air gets so hot it expands explosively, making a shock wave, the thunder. The peak temperature is 55,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It can go 186,000 miles per second, very fast. So sound only goes 1,100 feet per second, much slower. So that's why you see the lightning, then hear the thunder, because the light travels fastest. Five seconds indicates it's a little over a mile away, and that's why you count. You see the lightning, and then you count to hear the thunder. And uh, if some, some people say three, some people say five. About three to five seconds is a mile. That's how many miles away it is. Have anybody ever done that? One Mississippi, two, oh, it's two miles away, okay. Generally, thunder travels no more than 18 miles. Lightning can often be seen farther than 18 miles, so you'll just see the lightning and not hear it. Lightning takes place, okay, so this is the most important part here. Well, not yet, I wanna talk, okay. So this is what causes the lightning. Uh, it's a tall thundercloud. It's a warm air on the bottom and cold at the top. Um, plant or animal life wouldn't exist as we know it without lightning because it combines nitrogen and oxygen with the rain and fertilizes the earth. So lightning is really important. It also creates ozone. And you know how everybody always worry, used to, now that's not popular anymore, but people used to worry about the ozone layer. Oh no, it's got a hole. And, and kids were under the misimpression that it's got a hole, we're all gonna die, there's no way to fix it, no. Uh, lightning makes more ozone. So that smell, when you ever smell lightning, it's ozone that you're smelling. It's the same smell you smell if you go into Staples and smell the copiers, because they make ozone too. So, um, uh, so anyway, lightning is going on all over the world right now, making ozone to protect our planet too. Um, let's see. The United States is hit by some 90 million lightning strikes a year. Um, it depends on the location. Florida gets more lightning because they have a lot of rain. Lightning kills 55% more people than do tornadoes, more people than do hurricanes and floods. Um, it kills 100 to 125 Americans every year and injures 1,500. It destroys 30,000 buildings in the U.S. every year. It causes 30% of all church fires, 18% of all lumberyard fires, and more than half of all fires in country areas. Lightning can be just financially devastated. It can, it can hit a bunch of animals, and one time it has killed 500 sheep at once because it, it goes through the water. The first lightning bolt from a cloud is just as capable of causing death to a person as a later strike. That's a myth. Lightning can strike when it's not raining, that, so be careful. Lightning can strike the same place more than once. Have you ever been to the top of Stone Mountain? You can see these round places where it's been hit by lightning, and then sometimes you'll see a big one with a little one inside it. So it, it, lightning does hit the same place more than once. Okay, so those are, so now how to keep from being a lightning fatality. So if you can, stay inside of a building or a hard-topped automobile where you're shielded during a thunderstorm. Stay away from open windows and doors and stoves and fireplaces and faucets, sinks, bathtubs and showers. Metal pipes and ducts are good conductors of electricity. Stay off the telephone if it's uh, like, because uh, you're holding metal there. Okay, so um, I had a student once, she was doing dishes during a lightning storm and got shocked because lightning hit somewhere else, it went through the water and the pipes and she got shocked doing dishes. So if your mom wants you to do the dishes during lightning, go, sorry, I can't. I learned in physics class, it's not smart. Uh, try not to be the tallest object on the landscape. What lightning does is it likes to hit whatever is tallest and round. So if you're standing out in the middle of a field, you're the tallest and look at your little round head right there ready to get by, hit by lightning. So you don't want to be the tall thing. Also, don't go stand under trees. 
trees, you guessed it, are tall and round on top. If you're standing under a tree and it gets hit by lightning, the lightning goes all down in branches and you're going to be hit too. You're not going to escape the lightning. So get down from bicycles, horses, and tractors. Uh, don't be caught with a raised golf club. A lot of people get killed out in the golf courses every year um, getting hit by lightning. Also watch out for metal baseball, softball bats. I'll increase your chances of being the tallest object on the landscape. Stay away from trees. Don't run for cover. Squat down as low as possible with your feet together and on the only part of you touching the ground. If you're in water, get out. Electricity can go through water for a great distance. Even if a person is not killed by an electric current or a lightning strike, they can be stunned and then drown. So, one of the ways to know you're about to get struck by lightning and suddenly all the hair on you will start standing up on end. And so one time I was at my old house in Douglasville, and um, it had been raining, it had quit, and I had a garden, and I had ripe tomatoes in the garden, and so I decided to run out to the garden real quick and get some tomatoes for lunch. And I'm out there at my garden, and suddenly all the hair starts standing up on, on me, on end. I thought, oh, no. I know what to do because I teach physics. I got to get down low. And, and, uh, and what I did, I didn't have time to, to think about, is I just splatted as flat, fast as I could down onto the, in the mud of my garden. Blah. And as soon as I did, lightning struck my neighbor's Bradford pear tree because the tree was then the, the tallest thing, not me, and it exploded that tree. I mean, there was no tree left. It was like, there was a tree, and then there were pieces of a tree. It was gone. Yes. I was, boom, getting in the ground. I was getting down as fast as possible. I didn't have time to get down nice and neat. I would, had to get, I knew I was about to get hit. Well, I'm saying, like, what if the grass is, like, already wet? I, it didn't matter. I mean, it's better to be wet and muddy than dead. I would have been killed. I would have exploded like that. Oh, like it could tra travel through the water? No, I'm saying, like, if you're, like, it's, if, it's, if it's been raining for a certain period of time, like, the ground is wet, right. and you splat, is it, is it going to, is the lightning going to, like... Go through the ground? It could. But um, but I just knew I had to get down. And also, for me, where the lightning hit, there was a road between us. So it was my neighbor across the street, so I, it didn't travel through the ground. But, um, but that was the closest I've ever been to getting hit by lightning. Now, I have a cousin's cousin. Okay, so I got my cousin, and then that he has a cousin who I'm not related to, but it's my cousin's cousin who got hit by lightning and um, he got struck, and I met him, and he, he was like 12, and he was bald and could no longer speak. Like it had made, it had fried his brain. So you just don't want this to happen to you. I mean, he lived, but, you know, it, lightning's dangerous. You got to be careful. All right, there's our standard. Okay, so let's go on to electric circuits. <laughs> So don't be the tallest thing. We already did that one. Where is my electric circuits? Is it that one? Nope, it's got a little picture of that on it. There it is. Okay, electric circuits. So a circuit is a path for electricity. It's a path for electricity. So you have already built a, a circuit. We have a great looking car up here and you found already that you needed a battery and wires and something to run. And it can also have a switch. Switches are not necessary, but they're nice to have. So here I have a diagram of an electric circuit. So electric current is the movement of electric charges. Electric current is the movement of electric charges. So here, you see my little negatives going around the circle, okay? Um, here, the charge runs into resistance. Shh, quit talking. 
It runs into resistance. Resistance is measured in ohms. Have you ever heard of that? Ohms in electricity? And when it runs into electricity, in this light, then the electricity doesn't like going through that tough to get through resistor and instead it starts getting converted to heat and light the electric the energy changes forms and becomes light okay so this should say charge i don't know if yours got cut off like mine charge is uh is gonna um this is our charge and it moves the charge is going to move, and when the charge, when it moves, is called a current. Have you heard of an electrical current? So here's our electric current, and it's measured in amps, amps, okay? There's something also in electric currents called voltage. You've heard about that. It's on batteries, and it is the formula E, e over Q. But the voltage is measured in volts, and it's really the electric potential. It's what pushes the electricity through. The, the current is the flow of electrons. That's your amps. But the volts is what pushes that current along. It's like if you have a stream. The water in the stream is like the current. But you could have a water wheel pushing the water in the stream, and that would be your volts. That would be causing it. Okay? So batteries are often in your electrical circuit, and it's chemicals to make a, a chemical reaction that makes your energy, your electricity, and that would be... Uh, Batteries have or have a measured in volts. Okay, now let me see if there's something up up here. Okay, you can measure how much electricity is going through a current with a voltmeter. It measures volts. It measures it in volts. You can have a switch. That's called a knife switch. If it's open, uh. If it's open, there's no current. If it's closed, yes. So if you close this down, then the current goes through. If it's open, it breaks the path for electricity and there's no current. Okay. Then you can also measure the amps. You can measure the volts, you can measure the amps, and that's called an ammeter down here. The kind of battery the kind of electricity made for a battery is called DC electricity. It only moves in one direction. It only moves one way. You can also have a plug. You can plug in your circuit, and the plug switches the electricity back and forth. It moves two ways. So when you plug it in, the electricity jiggles back and forth. That's AC. If you have a battery, it only goes one direction, DC, direct current. Okay, power is sort of like the rate of electricity being used. It's the energy over the time, or it's um, equal to the volts minus the current. The symbol for current is I. I don't know why. I don't know why it didn't win. The units for energy you already know are joules. Okay. And the units for power, I think you already know, are watts. Didn't we learn that before already? So a lot of this is pretty familiar, isn't it? Most of these terms are pretty familiar. Y'all are doing good? We've been able to go very fast. I'm going to move that up some. Okay. Let me find mine. So there are three ways to induce currents. So... If you get in a time machine and you're sent back to the 1600s and you decide, you know what, this place could use some electricity. How do I make some? There's, I'm going to tell you three ways to make electricity. Very useful if you end up in a time machine. <laughs> okay, number one, you can make electricity by moving a wire near a magnet. Number two, move a magnet near what? A wire, yes. 
If you move magnets and wires next to each other, you make electricity. And then the third thing is you can turn electricity on and off um, and change the magnetic field. And that makes, um, that makes electricity too. A current in one circuit can cause a current in another circuit. So you can have one electric current next to a, a, another wire and it will start doing electricity too. So here they've got the wire near the magnet and here we got the magnet near the wire. Okay, can I go on to electric energy? Okay, electric energy, generation of electric energy. Okay, so this is, that's how you can make a little electricity in the lab. But what about Georgia Power? How do they make electricity? Do they have someone standing there with a magnet waving it by a wire? No, not at all. So this is how they always generate electricity. And how they do it is by, they, they got to move something so that they can have magnets moving near a wire. Okay, so this is what they do. First of all, they make heat. You can burn coal or a nuclear reaction, or there's some other ways to do this too. But what they normally do is they burn something and boil some water. The water makes steam. Okay, okay. Or, and this is a better way to do it, it's a little more green, you can use a waterfall, a waterfall or a windmill. But you got to get something turning. And this, so the steam or the waterfall or the windmill turns what's called a turbine. It's like a big pinwheel. And once they get that pinwheel moving, then you can have the magnets on it moving near a wire and it's going to make electricity. So it moves uh, coils, coils of wire, coils of, hmm. electricity flows. I'm going to do it like this. I'm changing this. I changed it from last time. It moves magnets. It moves magnets near wires and it makes electricity. Okay, so anybody ever been to Lake Lanier? Lake Lanier Dam? Lake Lanier makes most of the electricity for Georgia. Most of Georgia uses water. They let the water out of the lake and it goes, it's like blowing on a pinwheel. And it turns the turbine, which makes the electricity. So all they have to do is let the water flow over the dam, and we get free electricity. Now, they had to build the dam, but once they did, free electricity. Hoover Dam is the same thing. Anybody ever been there? It's a gigantic dam out west. Now, it doesn't make all the electricity for Georgia, though. So if you go to Rome, there's a power plant a Georgia power power plant that I went on a field trip to and we got to see, we got to look in the little oven and see them burning the coal to boil the water, to make the steam, to turn the turbine, to make the electricity. Now, when they did that, I was really impressed. There was no smoke. They capture all of the smoke and reuse it. They capture all the smoke and they turn it into kitty litter. So, like, they, like, don't release it into the environment. It's extremely clean the way they do it. It's, it's their clean coal. So here we've got a little picture of them doing that. It's where once they make the power, then it goes on wires and it gets distributed out. And if you take physics, you'll learn a lot more about that. Okay, so there's a relationship between electricity and magnets. You can use one to make the, you can use them to make electricity. So we, now we need to learn a little bit more about magnets. So, and probably when you were a kid, you played with magnets and you realize they stick to metal, they stick to each other. Teachers, pardon the interruption, this is just a test for the intercom. Okay. 
Uh, and uh, you, you've taken magnets before and tried to shove them together and they wouldn't go together. They go, ooh, and go off to the side, right? You've all done these experiments already? Okay, good. Okay, so magnets have a positive end and a negative end called north and south. The ends are called the poles. Sometimes they're U-shaped magnets. Sometimes they're bar magnets. Permanent magnets can't be turned off. They're always. The attraction or repulsion is related to distance. The closer you get a magnet to something, the more it's going to stick. The south and north are opposites. So south and north, so they attract. Uh, south and south and north and north are the same, so they repel. They're the same, so they repel. Um, so it's a lot like positive and negative charges. Opposites attract, likes repel. Now, if you break a bar magnet, like here's a bar magnet with north and south. If you break it, it'll become two magnets, and it'll have a new north and a new south. So that's kind of cool. I think magnets are a little mysterious. The reason magnets can attract metal um, is, is because it can act like a magnet near a magnet. So when a metal is near a magnet, it'll line up and act like a magnet and those opposites attract. So it's sort of like making the metal become a magnet a little bit and then the opposites attract. So the magnetic domain just means that it's got north on one side, south on the other. Um, and for a magnetic domain, then you just end up with all of these aligned little molecules with the north and south lined up where everything's near an opposite. Okay, and that they're all lined up. If something's not magnetic, then it's not aligned. See, so, you know, a magnetic domain, things are aligned. If it's unmagnetic, it's not aligned. Now, what can a magnet pick up? Does it pick up all metal? Is all metal magnetized? No. So it can pick up some metal. There are some metals that will do it and be picked up by a magnet. Others won't. So here are some things that can be picked up. Iron can be picked up. We've got a nail, a paper clip. Okay, those can be picked up. Now, you can make a metal become a permanent magnet by um, heating it up, heat up metal, being near a magnet for a long, or being near it for a long time. So let me explain this better. Okay, so you want to make a magnet. You take some metal and heat it up and put it near a magnet and then let it cool down and it'll be a magnet too. Or if you just take that piece of metal and put it with a strong magnet for a long time, it will become magnetized also. So you can do it with time or heat for the two ways. So a long time ago, my dad had an old car and it was getting metal shavings in the engine. So somebody told him to put a magnet underneath the oil pan, a strong magnet, and it would attract the metal bits so they wouldn't get back into the engine. So he stuck it on there for a long time. He just drove around with that magnet on there. Eventually he took it off and the whole oil pan had become a magnet. So he could take off the magnet and it was a magnetized oil pan that would attract the pieces of, of metal still. Now, how can you stop something from being a magnet? <clears throat> Any ideas? You have a magnet and you want to quit magneting. Any, any ideas what you could do? Cool it. Once it's cooled, it usually keeps its magnetic properties. So you can hit it. Sometimes if you hit a magnet really hard, it'll stop being magnet. And I've done that before. I've hit a magnet with a hammer really hard, 
and it didn't work anymore. It was a little disappointing, but kind of interesting too. Because what you're doing is you're making it non-lined anymore, those little positive and negative magnetic domains. Okay, what is a magnetic field? It is the area around the magnet. The area around the magnet. It can be represented or drawn by lines. Just like I did here. See my little lines going around? You can also use iron filings. Okay, so did anybody ever buy at the convenience store? My daddy used to call them nasty market. But they're not as nasty as they used to be. Racetrack's kind of nice and quick trip. Okay, but say you're at really, you know, someplace like that. And they have little games that kids can buy for the road. And there's one called like Wooly Man or something like that. And it's and he's bald. And he, but there's iron filings in there. And it comes with a little magnet. And you do it on the bottom. And you can give him hair and a mustache. I remember those. They're still around. They still sell them. Like, maybe Bucky's would be a place to go to try to find one. But anyway, those are the what's in there is iron filings, and you can put a magnet underneath one of those things, like the Wooly Man, and you, it will the iron filings will line up where you can see the lines of magnetism. So um, we will probably, I think I've got some stuff for y'all to do that. It's not a woolly man, but it's a little physics experiment. I think we'll be doing that where you can sketch the lines. I'm going to look for them. I know I've seen them around here somewhere. The other thing is the earth is one big magnet. And that's why compasses point north is because the, the, they're aligning. Okay. Electromagnetism. There is a link between electricity and magnets. Okay. Electric currents can be used to produce magnets. Okay. And also compass needles point to the North Pole. Okay, so um, am I going to talk about, yeah, it's down here. So what is the, more about this link between electricity and magnetism. How do you make an electromagnet? Have y'all ever heard of an electromagnet? This is what they use like at the junkyard to pick up cars. And then they, they turn on a magnet, they pick them up. They put the car wherever they want it to go, they turn it off and it drops. It's not a permanent magnet, it's a magnet that can be turned on and off by electricity. Okay, an electromagnet, okay? So, how an electromagnet is made is you have coils of wire. I think it's already drawn in your notes. You run electricity, here's my battery, through the coils of wire, and when it does, it makes a magnet. And so, like, if you had a, a, um, a nail, my little electromagnet here would pick up the nail. And then if I took the battery off, it would let go of the nail. So we might do a lab like that. It's hard to do. It's hard to make. It's hard to get enough coils for it to work. So it's made stronger by more coils. The more coils you have in your wire, the stronger the electromagnet. Okay, so here is a few other little things about magnets. Just like an ammeter measures amps and a voltmeter measures volts, there's something that can measure magnetism called a galvanometer. Okay? There's also electromagnetic induction. Induced currents are a way to cause static electricity. So there is a little machine thing that you've seen where it's like got rods and then it'll have a little bit of a, a little electricity line going up. And they really liked it in old monster movies. They would have this. So um, there is ways to do that using electricity. All right. Is that all of our notes? Did I do all of it? Is everything filled out? Ta-da! You have 30 minutes now 
to work on your study guide. Um, uh, you can use the books in the back. You can use your notes. Yep, that's your study guide. Uh, and you can get it all filled out. And if you want to sit with your lab partner and work on it, you may. All right? Get started. Science is great.